Our speaker is Giovanni Seeger. Unleash your inner Stillman. Unleash your inner Stillman, Giovanni Seeger. Stillman checked all the boxes for a weird person in the making. He was homeschooled all the way through high school. Check. He was obsessed with computers and programming as a kid. Yeah, check. And he learned how to smile when he searched on Google, help, girls run away from me when I smile. <laughs> now he knows how to smile like a regular homo sapien. <laughs> check. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests, without further ado, let me introduce you to Stillman. Hi, I'm Stillman. Oh, you think that's funny, don't you? Well, I would probably think it's funny too, except my middle name is Stillman. That's what I was like at 14 years old. Of course, by the time I got to college, I was a well-adjusted human being with excellent conversational skills. You see, I had all this practice talking to my mother and my siblings. <laughs> Conversations usually went okay until people inevitably asked me where I went to school. Well, I was homeschooled. No, I didn't milk cows as part of my education. No, I have no desire to marry my cousin. <laughs> and yes, I do know how to make eye contact. When people found out I was homeschooled, it's like I just told them that my parents raised me in an insane asylum. I mean, to be fair, it was pretty insane, but it di di didn't affect me. <laughs> Come on, homeschooling isn't that bad. I only know a few homeschooling families that killed their couch to make clothing for their children. <laughs> Stepping back for a second, I'm actually really glad that I was homeschooled. There were a lot of benefits for me. In fact, did you know that homeschoolers get 15 to 30 percentile points? above public schoolers on standardized tests? Ha, huh, nerds. <laughs> and homeschooling taught me how to work without supervision because my mom was tired of it after four kids before me, understandable. And in the last two years, she pretty much just handed me the teacher's manuals, handed me two years of homework assignments, <laughs> said there's enough top ramen in the pantry to feed a small country. <laughs> and I have exactly 524 sleeping pills that's one for every weekday from now until you're done. See ya, buddy. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. She had enough for the weekends, too. <laughs> now, if I hadn't told you guys that I was a homeschooled computer nerd with absolutely no social skills, you probably wouldn't have figured it out. At least, I hope. So I'm trying to figure out why I just told you. <laughs> oh, right. Because I've slowly come to an incredible, powerful even, conclusion. Nobody gives a gosh darn crud. Pardon my homeschool. No one has ever ridiculed me for being homeschooled. They're just curious about how it works. And no one has ever told me to get off the computer and go get a life. Besides my mother. Maybe there are one or two things that you can think about that you try to hide from certain people because you're not sure what they'll think. Maybe you tried to hide the fact that you go to Toastmasters because you're afraid that people may find us weird. Well, looking down at this wonderful audience today, I can say with absolute confidence, you are pretty weird. <laughs> or maybe you tried to hide the fact that deep down inside, you're a serial nose picker. And you're afraid that people would judge you for that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, actually, they would judge you for that. So. <laughs> Keep that under wraps. Or maybe you enjoy watching the Kardashians on TV. <laughs> no judgment for me. You're just literally what's wrong with America. <laughs> I mean, you're probably such a big fan that you know all of their fa first names, like Kim, Chris, Chloe, Kylie, Courtney. Kim. I mean, I don't know the names because I'm a normal person. <laughs> you probably even know their pet names. You know, Bertha, Gabbana, and Honey, and their little pet rabbit, Snowflake. That's my favorite. <laughs> Shame on you. But seriously, it's, it's fine. You can watch whatever show you want. You see, as a rule of thumb, folks, people care a lot less about you than you care about you. And for some of us, that is extremely comforting news. 
because that means we are free to live our lives the way we choose and no one's going to judge us for it. Now, up to this point, I've delivered a pretty positive and uplifting message. I basically patted you on the back and go, said, go on, my sweet summer child, be as you want to be. It's so inspirational. <laughs> but you're not quite off the hook. You see, this obsession with what other people think of you is actually rooted in self-confidence, in a belief that you are so important that other people have to constantly be thinking about you because clearly you're the most important thing in the room. And this belief, this kind of self-confidence that is negative, a, a self-confidence that goes beyond what you really should have in yourself, that can be negative because it means you can't get out of your own bubble and care about other people. Sometimes I wish that I was like Stillman again because Stillman was just a little kid living his dreams and pursuing his hobbies. He didn't care what other people thought. And sometimes me, grown up me, I'm so obsessed with what other people think that I can't get out of my own bubble and care about other people. On the other hand, Stillman kind of sucked. <laughs> Friends, it is time to stop caring about what other people think and start caring about what other people need. And only then will you be able to escape that negative self-criticism nagging at you. And really, how bad can it be? At least you're not me. <laughs> Mr. Contest Chair. <laughs>